It's me, Scotty. Hey, Scotty, what's on your mind? Nothing much. Uh, uh, like I said, I like uh, uh, Adolf Reed, uh, respect his work, uh, just disagree with him. And I think, you know, and I understood, uh, like, his experience in progressive politics uh, uh, movements. But it, it was just certain things about the interview where you kind of felt it was a little bit condescending kind of with the way that people were a- asking the questions. Like, uh, you know, this whole idea that, uh, well, Trump, <laughs> like, and I understand this, like, being a little bit hyperbolic, but, like, well, you don't know what Trump uh, is going to do. Mm-hmm. Well, we know what the hell Hillary's going to do. I'm more afraid of Hillary than I am of Trump. Mm-hmm. We're we're basically dog whistling Iran. We're getting in the saber island with Iran, Russia. Hell, we uh, she wants to go into Syria. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that a lot of the things that uh, he's afraid of Trump doing. We're pretty sure that Hillary uh, will be able to do now, and I, I, I'll even give a few examples. It was a Democrat, Bill Clinton, that destroyed welfare. Mm-hmm. It was a Democrat uh, in Ferguson um, when Mike Brown got killed. Mm-hmm. The the uh, the the governor of Missouri is a Democrat. Obama sent in, in the uh, police state a Democrat. A lot of times, and, and really, uh, I think that a Democrat is more dangerous because, and this is what's so frustrating, this is what I told you a while ago, that a lot of progressive, respected progressives, no matter who it is, and Chomsky did this too, in 2004 with John Kerry, and he's doing it this year, but with the whole strategic voting, mm-hmm. it's, he's, uh, it, he like he's subscribing to lesser the lesser evil voting. He might say that he wants people to think about it in a different way, but come on, man, it's lesser evil voting. Well, I mean, let me let me, let me ask you got, a question. Well, Actually, no, go ahead. Finish finish your thought because I want to hear you first. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no, no. Finish your it, thought, man. Go ahead. It, it's just, it's just that it, it's just like he even said. People are just powerless. They don't want to do this anymore. How long have we, you're going to get told by even well-respected progressives? Like, I even heard, like, Tom Hartman barking on a woman who's uh, yeah, I probably heard playing, it. playing, going to jail sign. Like, yeah. come on, man. What the hell are we doing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, and I think he spoke to that. Um, you listen, if you read his article, which I, I think everybody listening tonight read his article, like he he's not I pulling read his any, article. Yeah, he, he's not pulling any punches with anybody. So if if, if it comes off condescending, it's, it's because he's just coming out, you know, he's coming out swinging. And and I respect that. And, and I'm all you know, I'm all for that. So uh, but, you know, if you you know, I definitely respect uh, the audience who felt um, maybe uh, that he was being condescending. Um, but I, I have to ask the question. Right. Um, why why would you think that Donald Trump would not do the exact same thing like and i guess the more important is question is do you think there is any way possible to actually stop Hillary's version of World War 3 or Donald Trump's version of World War 3 i think it's just like George Carlin said power does what power wants but in the case of it's just like i said the Democrats are, like Glenn Ford said, they're more effective people. I mean, he talks about the post office. Well, the the Republican Party, did they, they tried to attack the post office in 2006. Mm-hmm. We've known about this for like 10 years. And Obama, when he had uh, all houses of government, could have stopped it from happening. Well, well actually, hang on. Hang I on. Mean, let, me, let me jump in there. The only thing that stopped it in 2006 was a divided uh, government was the fact that the, the Democrats yeah, have yeah. came back uh, and they took the House with Nancy Pelosi. Um, the only thing that would stop Trump would be a divided government. But right now, Trump would be going in. If Trump won, he would go in with a unified government. If Trump manages to win, that means he's going to keep the House, he's going to keep the Senate. Now the question becomes, what would stop him from doing any of the things that they've been wanting to do all along? 
And and I think that's I think that's the problem, right? We're not talking about we we play these scenarios that if Donald Trump goes in, that the that the Republican Congress and Senate would stop him. But why would they stop him when they can get whatever they've been wanting all along? Because they have the perfect guy who is a blank slate. I think it's fair to say outside of his bravado, Donald Trump is a blank slate and will take whatever anybody actually writes down and and would implement it. So I I think ultimately, and I'm just one. I'm just throwing this out here. This is I'm just echoing his argument because I don't really have the technology to have him on and take calls so i'm going to argue his position would be that we're powerless to stop it anyway so it's like you know how do you want how do you want your 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 third world war with someone who's trying to who is hawkish or someone who is cavalier with nuclear weapons you know it's it's we're not going to be able to stop it when if if that's what you believe is going to happen we're not really going to be able to stop it with hillary or donald trump and i person person now this is me speaking for me i just don't think i have zero faith in donald trump doing anything outside of what the republican establishment wants primarily because he has no agenda other than his hubris and when it comes time to even at the transition just to put people in office, just to put uh, all of his appointees, all of the positions that he has to fill. There's a couple of hundred positions that he has to fill. Do you know he is going to lean on all of the Republican infrastructure to accomplish all of the tasks that he has to do before he even gets in office? And to me, that signals to me that he is going to do whatever the Republican, the remaining Republican Party does, wants him to do. M- Paul Ryan isn't going anywhere. Mitch McConnell. Connell's not going anywhere. You may have a couple of people who defected, but you have people who are going to be there, and I fully believe they're going to control Donald Trump. So we're powerless with, with Hillary. We're power, powerless with Trump. The question is, how you know? Are you willing to risk a unified government where there would be no one there to stop Trump? Because the Republican Party, I don't see them being a blockade to the re- sitting Republican president. I just, I just don't see that. Do you you see something? Actually, you know what, Scotty? I would love to get you to answer that, but I, the, the lines are blowing up, man. Um, I have to grab some of these other calls. Yeah. Thanks for the call, man. Um, yeah, so that's my question to you is, is do you think that there would be any, any – do you think the Republican Party would actually try to stop Donald Trump when many of the things that he wants to do – are things that they've been saying they want to do all along. They've just been too tepid about it. They've been too timid, rather, uh, to to go out and just be as brazen. I, I have no more confidence in Donald Trump not blowing up the Middle East than I do Hillary Clinton.